Good day everyone, Alex McKellar here again with another Top Split TV race replay. This week we did the Skipjack from Nordschleife, which uh, was very interesting. Of course, Nordschleife has its very own unique style of racing. Um, I typically am a bit, I'll be honest, a bit intimidated by the place. Um, I like racing or driving the circuit, but racing here is a fairly challenging undertaking because there's as much uh, of racing the track as there is the drivers on the circuit. It requires an intense amount of concentration and, um, and you know, racecraft in parts as well. And you are absolutely uh, reliant on the community of drivers around you to uh, uh, who play their, their part in racing, of course, but uh, here it's a very significant part. You all want to, you kind of got a camaraderie of survival around here. Anyway, I actually, I was actually very tempted to not race this week at all and um, put some heavy laps in. Vasco Sorosky and I, are my chief rival this season, he and I spent uh, most of the week um, time trialling and trying to put in a good quality time and it sort of got to the point where I built up enough confidence that I could stay on the track and have a race. So that's that's what we did and uh, we did a couple. This was the fourth race I'd, I'd done this week and, and was building up to this one and uh, it was the Skipjack, the Japanese strength of field round on a Saturday night my time. Uh, it was about a 4,600 and something strength of field. Of course, the, the quality sessions here are separate because of how long a lap is and so you do your qualification session then you hop in a race uh, in a separate session down the road. so you can do a lot of quality sessions and that time will stand throughout the week your best time for each race session Manu Luketa put it on pole with a with a great time um, they don't show here the times unfortunately because of uh, because of the nature of the the way things work uh, with the quality sessions. Hikaru Sasaki joined him on the front row ahead of Nay and Agai and Seb Schultz. It's a, it's a rogue gallery here of some of the top skip drivers going around. Kike Sanchez, his name gets cut off by the overlays for some reason, but he'll probably appear as R in the timing tower from memory, but that's Kike. Haven't seen a lot of Kike for a while, but he's done well here to put it in the top five in this, this group. Vasco and I in sixth and seventh. Of course, we were in Discord last night having a chat while we did this. It was quite intense at times, I think, for both of us. It's a pretty scary place here. Loris Mario, Kenji Kudoda, Darwin Romero, Russell Clark the third. He was also in Discord with us. Neil Gardner similarly joined us in Discord last night. It's great to see Captain 499. Um, Yuan Si, I'm reading all the names here because I know them all. <laughs> Yuan Si Lin, Daniel Forgarini. Haven't seen him around for a while. Uh, but he's back uh, back with us. Masashi Katsuyama. Haven't raced with Katsuyama-san before. Greg Adams, the other clown in the in the field. He needs to update his details in the overlays. Greg, get on it. And Xavier Sanchez, who's uh, a streamer on Twitch as well. There's a few streamers in here, although I didn't stream this one live. Anyway, Greg, uh, Greg was in Discord as well. All right, let's go and get set for the race. It's three laps, of course, and um, we'll, t we'll start in the cockpit view, and um, well, I guess we'll get underway. Of course, the run into... Uh, T1 with the offset start, unlike Winton which had that unique start a couple of weeks ago where we were side by side, um, very settled and sedate start, it's very tempting to try and chuck it up the inside at turn one but the nature of the racing here particularly, well in most senses honestly is um, I find at least uh, in my experience it's very easy for packs to form small mistakes here particularly yeah look particularly to feel like this where the times are so tight and the quality is pretty high um, any little gaps that start to form the, the straights are so long the draft the way it sucks drivers behind into the cars in front if there's a gap of any substance and I'm talking still within the draft 
And you can see a little one starting to open up. Two cars in front with Kike uh, ahead of Vasco. Um, that that gap can be accentuate, ex accentuated or extended dramatically because of the draft. You see how big that gap is already. We're already at, and it's just growing as the straight continues. To counter that though, the compression in the corners is quite significant as well. And once the draft runs out and everyone's compressed as they're going to be, if you've still got a sniff of any sort of draft, you'll you'll catch up then. And it's, again, it's quite a unique characteristic of this track. However, what I find about the, the racing here is that um, it, it can fragment quite a bit. You can get packs forming. And it's once a pack's left you or, or you've left someone behind, it's very hard to bridge that gap. Very hard to bridge that gap, particularly when, you know, the guys in front here, the qualities are um, representative, really, more so than typical, because you can do multiple qualities. And once you set a time, it stands for the whole, set, the whole week, right? So the guys here in front of you are typically in front of you for a reason. And if you if you lose a draft here, there, you know, barring mistakes, you're probably not going to catch it. So I'm acutely aware of that it's one of the pressures of racing here. You just don't want to lose the guys in front. And if you like me, you're starting sort of midfield here. Um, yeah, it was really playing in my mind that the guys not only were they in front, and there were key parts of the circuit where these guys were much much quicker than me some of the technical twisty bits through the sort of third quarter of the circuit that we'll see in a bit, which really had me worried. But uh, yeah, anyway, and I was, I think it was kind of a three or four here, so I'm, I think I'm losing our rating in this spot. Yeah, I am looking at my telemetry. Not that I rating's the, the biggest concern in the world, honest, we all say that, but we all care deep down, oh, I don't know. It's a constant struggle, that one. So we're still in touch. We're coming up uh, soon on the halfway point of, of lap one. And he sees pretty sedate. Aside from Luketa and Sasaki swapping spots on the first big long straight, uh, not a lot's happened almost throughout the whole field. Not surprised to see Sanchez up a couple of spots out the back. He's super fast. Often seen joining a big skippy race. And um, oh, Adams has had something happen and he's dropping a bit. You can see what happened to Greg on that. Um, yeah, I often see Sanchez join a big race at the back after coming from a different series because uh, he streams multiple cars. And um, But moving his way forward. It'd be tough to move forward in this field, though. There we go. See so you change for the lead. And then look at that. Everyone's holding station, more or less, in that top pack. Interesting, the one I had my eye on, honestly, was Darwin Romero. Uh, you can see he's made up two positions. He's one of the Astro boys. Uh, quite aggressive in his racing. Um, very aggressive at times. Sometimes, and that's the sort of thing, you you take your chances with that. And you see, look, straight away, I, I wasn't having any of that. I, there's no, like, And it really upset, upset my run through there. He, um, he came once... That front pack, I thought we were almost away. You see, he compressed up the straight once all the draft ran out, and the other guys behind who had a sniff came on like, like a wildfire, right? And Darwin wanted to move forward through there. He'd already made up two spots on that straight, and I just went, nah, champ, that's not the time. I'm not giving up that spot there. But you can see we've almost been dropped as a result. But... Vasco had a bit of a whoops there. I was talking to him at the time, mate. Keep your head in it. Keep your head in it. You're good. And uh, that helped me. And didn't hurt him too much, thankfully. He was worried about getting dropped. You can see it's only eight. Uh, what's that? Seven tenths behind Kike. He's all right. This is the section of the track where I seem to lose out to the really quick guys. Thankfully, um, wasn't the case at this time. Vasco pulling me back in touch. And uh, again, Darwin looming very large in my mirrors, as you can see. <laughs> mm. 
decent run through there. Now, this section after this next right hander, from memory, if I'm getting my sectors right. Here we come up and over the hill and round. This is essentially a straight. It's um, one of the biggest, well, it's hard to say. It's a surprisingly large um, draft zone through here. Lots of little twisty bits and all the rest of it, but you, you gain so much, see? And I move over to the right side, Darwin. I'm not having to chuck it up the inside of this fourth gear right hander. We really need to set up for the world's longest straight coming up, which is, you know, if he's going to have a go, that, that's that's where I'm going to let him have a go, and he will have a go, absolutely. And there's, I just don't see any point in this sort of scenario in chucking it up any random corners around here when you're literally, you know, 60 seconds away, you know, in an eight minute lap from this, this kind of scenario here where the car runs out of speed um, long before the straight's ever done. Once you're in the draft, you can see we're starting to get pretty high up in the skippy's range. Haven't quite hit the, the tap out point of the engine, which is a, from memory, it's about 215. I make sure I'm over on the right. I like to be on the right on this straight and I leave the door wide open for Darwin. I know he's gonna go. Absolutely know he's gonna go. And this is where you can see what happened. The draft runs out and I actually slip back into fourth way early. Darwin's just shot up the inside and gained three positions through there. As you can see, he's got that kind of aggression in that kind of spot where, um, look, if, look if he's hanging out on the grass now. Um, he's got that aggression in that kind of scenario that, you know, depending on the mindset of the drivers around you can be a big advantage. Like you can see he's now up five positions. Uh, Schultz is up three in the lead as a result of that draft, but on the balance throughout the circuit, he made five positions on that lap where most of us lost one. Um, which, again, if I don't know, there's a bit of a group mindset here, I think, about, hey, we've got to survive this. There's certain places that you do stuff and certain places that you don't. Um, and certainly... Uh, on the straight there is a place where you do stuff by way of trying to move forward. Um, Darwin certainly did that in spades. So we're still in it here. So I, I was expecting to potentially get dropped into a second pack, if you like. And, and that's, whilst that's very disappointing, it's not unexpected here, as I said. I think, I feel like sometimes the race will break up quite a bit. Um, and you'll get a lead bunch of a handful of cars and anything from one to a handful. And you see, I'm, I'm getting dropped in the draft. I'm well and truly in the draft, but the cars in front get further away. But then the draft runs out and it compresses up again. See, I've still got that draft and in the braking zone, I can catch right up as it compresses. compresses. You've got to be really careful on the braking zones here. Super careful. Uh, I think there's a spot later on in, in the race where I nearly punt the driver in front into next week on a straight. <laughs> I got so caught out. Um, actually, no, well, well, we'll see it when it happens. Anyway, we're um, coming through this challenge. Again, you, you've got to really be careful how you present your car through this section. When you're on your own, the gearing, the braking points, the you know, where you're applying the throttle, it's all very different to when you're, you know, I'm eight deep in a pack here, you know, and I've got two guys behind me as well. Uh, actually, what are we down to there? We're probably down to P14. This is a 14 car pack spread over just under five seconds. Pretty outstanding at this stage of the race. You know, we're well over a third into the race at a track like this and you've got a 14 car pack. Interesting. And and as I said, not a great deal of movement throughout the field. I think certainly in the first two laps for the most part, despite, uh, uh, you know, 
mistakes notwithstanding and what have you, and you know the likes of Darwin making those sorts of moves, um, I think everyone's still largely racing the circuit and worried about breaking the draft chain, as in who, who, which link in the chain is going to break and really throw me out of contention altogether. There'll also be people in this pack, like me at certain times, thinking, oh, I'm just hanging on by the skin of my teeth. It's a very uh, unique uh, challenge of the mind here as well, I think, at least in my experience. This, as I said, was my fourth race. Very, very important corner here, sorry. Very important corner. You must get this right because if you're seven or eight tenths behind the guy in front you and there's a pack like this in front of you, you will get dropped. You will get dropped up this straight, 100%. You'll lose a second easy as the, that draft um, sucks up the guys in front of you into the into the leaders. Now, very interestingly though, if you're you know right on the edge of it and you're just hanging on, the seven cars in front of me here, they're all thinking, oh, this is one of the times I can move forward. And then you watch over this kink; it all compresses. It all just oh, this. That's I nearly punted Vasco. <laughs> right there, I nearly punted him. Oh, clear into probably next month through there. You gotta remember that's a fourth or fifth year corner. Or a kink more than a corner. You know, this is the full as I was saying, this is the fourth race I've done this week and um I've got to tell you it's so intense. Um battling the circuit and the other drivers at the same time. Key corner here of course. I find this one incredibly ch Oh Vasco, he's gone, he's on the outside we were talking throughout he was calling me through and then he started getting attacked by Kuroda behind him a little touch of wheels behind uh, with Vasco and Kuroda you see he's, he's managed to keep it just in the draft though he's lost all that momentum very easily done there and I'm talking to him stay in it mate stay in it you got this and you can see he's already back inside the the draft, but well and surely in the danger zone, and and it's partly because I struggle through here compared to, relative to the other guys in this pack, and partly because Vasco is doing an amazing job. You can see he's pulling it back in. I guess I'm acting as the weak link here, or we'll drawing him back in at least. And this is a, this is a really strong performance by Vasco this through this sector, because. He was outside a draft, and there's no really massive compression points in this, this sector. And he's just, whether it's adrenaline's kicked in, and he's just, he's done that many laps. Like me, we've done a lot, we've both done a lot of laps here this week, to the point of resenting at the track almost. But um, what can I tell you, that's, that's a, such a key moment in the race, and it's a real testament to the effort he's put in this week that he was able to bridge that gap. Not only that, but then you compare it to Kuroda and the other guys behind, that was the moment that this this 14 car pack got split. So it was a key moment there, Vasco made the mistake. It could have been race ending for him, not in terms of, well, it could have been a crash, but it could have been, that's it, I'm done, in terms of com competition. He fought hard, got back on the back, and then, but you see the guys behind him couldn't go with him. It's top effort. We go through the second carousel now, and this is where we go into the second phase of the big battle zone here on the world's longest, I don't know, is it a runway? It's, it's, it's about a minute long straight without exaggeration, a minute at top speed. But you can see, yeah, and you watch, two and a half seconds going onto the straight between Sorosky and Kuroda, and it's already starting to open up. And you won't get the same level of compression here because you can go literally five wide here, four easy. And you see, I'm not making any ground, not making any ground. But then as the guys fan out in front and they lose draft, it's like someone's just chucked a, a slab of bricks in the back of your skip and you slow down. Look how quickly I arrive here. Once their draft runs out, you can see the difference. And I, I live straight away, right? To come to the kink. Oh, big moment, big moment. Oh, evasive action. We got through, kind of. We got through all right. But we've lost a couple. 
That's one way to make a pass, I guess. And now up to P4. And Romero in amongst the chaos. He's now up in the second. He's up eight spots, if you can believe it. Unbelievable. We lost a couple there. I think we lost... Um, who do we lose? Sasaki, definitely. I think Sasaki. Possibly the only super casualty out of that. But now we're down to a pack of seven. So we didn't actually lose that many, but it's a front pack of seven and then the, the rest, pretty much. I have to admit, and we'll go take a look uh, at a couple of key moments uh, at the end of the race. We'll probably look at each run through the uh, through the final straight, because that's where the, um, the chips really get put on the table. But... Um, uh, yeah, like I said, I guess that's one way to make places up. Um, survival, and a lot of it is about survival gear. I had a moment just then when I was a bit worried about getting dropped, but you can see the guys have run out of draft in front, and if you're still in the draft, you just get sucked back in. I'm thinking, go left, go right. I might go left here, inside of the kink. Smurf and Seb Schultz says no, you can't have the inside, then moves back to the outside, then back to the inside again. I've got Luketa up the inside here having a look. He's He was involved in that incident, but coming through, I said to Vasco, look, watch out, Manu's going to be really uh, aggressive here. And now I'm in a, well, as you would expect, he's got some of, if not the best pace in this field. The adrenaline would have been pumping because he was right in the middle of that incident that we went through on the big back straight. Uh, and he'll be looking to, to win it from there. I reflected with Vasco at this point. Somewhere around here, though, I'm in a Smurf sandwich. Schultz in front, Luketa the third behind. And I, I'd actually just, the race before this one was uh, similar, about 4,600 strength of field, and I... Oh, I made the mistake that I never make because I never changed my fuel for quality. This week I changed my fuel for quality and of course uh, I didn't change it back. So I had the pit and then I got a 40 second speeding and pit penalty. It was a great day out. <laughs> but that actually dropped my eye rating below Luketa's. Smurf and Manu Luketa's who, um, on, he's got two other guys, he's got a couple of 8k accounts and then this one which is now yeah, six and a half so uh, I feel better if a Smurf's got more I rating than I do just quietly um, but uh, look that's another story I was sitting in fourth with uh, yeah a bit over half a lap to go and uh, yeah, feeling much better about the position in the pack. Um, and starting to think about that final big back straight. There's a bit more work to be done here, of course. Very easy to come unstuck here. You're still battling the circuit to get to that point. Uh, but from here, I'm thinking, well, I, I want to keep Manu behind, potentially. Although, he'll, he'll probably have a crack here at the big back straight, which is the other strategic passing zone. I want to be careful at the compression and the kink. I want to... Potentially, I was actually in two minds between trying to move past Schultz on the straight because um, I knew Luketa behind me would be looking to move forward here. Um, although I, I've seen an SNL last season, we saw Devantia win this race uh, from fifth coming onto the last straight. That's what the draft does. So I'm thinking about where I position my car, where I position my car. I like to be very definitive. I don't want to move around if I can. Sometimes I make mistakes, but... I want to put my car so it's very obvious what I'm doing. And so I, I went to the outside here and I thought, nah. Oh. I was thinking as much as of attacking as defending there, but then I realised, oh, yeah, Manu will just go up the inside. And then we get settled back in. So I lost the position, didn't go anywhere. But again, I was reflecting that, you know, Devantia won SNL from P5 coming onto the last straight so last season. So I figured, well... Maybe there's still a chance of something here anyway. Now it's just about a, a matter of surviving this damn carousel. 
don't put it in first gear. Cheapers have done that a couple of times this, this week and it... Uh, yeah, anyway, it's frustrating. So we're in P5. And now it's all two things on my mind. Survive these next few sectors. And what are we going to do on the straight? When we, uh, we put the chips on the table and we roll the dice for the final time to see how this one plays out. Great to see Vasco still in the train, still in with a shot. Everyone's in with a shot who's in the front pack on that uh, final straight. You can draft a pass two to three times. The positions can change, the, the deck can shuffle on that back straight. You've just got to be, you know, if you talk about the draft being a second, uh, it's got to be, you've got to be sort of within about, I don't know, five or six tenths is my, my assessment of the car in front typically um, to be in with a shot. Nice fun, double right hand there, fourth gear. Lot of, there are some really great sections on this circuit that are a lot of fun to hot lap and challenge yourself. Like I said, this bit here is just a, essentially a big straight. Simanu getting really, uh, <laughs> really excited about what's to come, I guess. The guy leading the way ahead of Romero. Romero up eight positions, as we said. I don't know if I want to lead. I'm okay with leading a two or three car, four, maybe a four car pack onto the back straight, but not a not a seven car. Probably not much in it for you. All right, here we go. We're starting at P5. Let the games begin. Already, people are starting to move around side to side. Look at it all playing out. I made. Sure, I, I like the right hand side. I left the right hand, the left hand lane for Vasco, but I couldn't go too far to the right. I was going to miss out on draft altogether. Doot doot. Here we come. The skippy train. Bit of side draft here. I thought I'd box Darwin in. I thought I got him boxed in good enough. Oh, oh, apparently he's coming out. You see, I lifted a bit there. I've still got draft. Oh, oh, net code. Oh, look, it's a net code bump draft. I don't, oh. Yeah, I don't know. We were close. I didn't think we were that close. But that has got us through and clear. I, I couldn't believe I heard the clear call. And now we're side by side with Darwin. Side by side through the final sector, leave him enough rooms because he's yeah, he spits out there. I did back out, I did back out. Oh, we got P2 absolutely backed out there. Um, but that's okay. All right, let's go. Um, Let's pause for a minute there and go back. I want to look at a couple of things. Um, I would like to look at... Where's my cameras? All right, let's go this way. I'd like to look at the, the three runs down the straight, right? So this was lap, lap one, right? And we'll run through the finish there at the end so you can see sort of how it played out and what my thinking was here. So you can see here, uh, I'm in P7, Darwin uh, behind us is in P8, right? And this is the first run through the big long straight. And you can see this is where things really can change. You've already got the Ducks and Drakes going up four wide in front. I like the right hand side. I've left the left for, left it open on the inside there for Darwin. Vasco kindly comes over and gives me a bit of draft, but there's such a wedge in front, it's always going to happen. And then Darwin goes left onto the grass a bit, says, I am going, look at this. I want to focus on Darwin here. Look at this run all over the curbs. That's using every bit of the track. Of the That's how you make three positions, I guess. Uh, that was the significant moment there. Vasco sensibly 
backs out. We haven't really lost a lot there. We're still in the front pack. And, uh, but how's that move, eh? Pretty epic. Well, that's what I mean about making moves. See how he arrives on the scene with the extra pace. Costs a little bit there as we all get sorted out. Still three wide, sort of, almost three and a half through there. And, um, that aggression, uh, paying dividends for Darwin on that occasion. All right, so next lap. Uh, that was that lap. So the next one. Oh, this was uh, pretty race-defining for a few folks. So if we go ahead, um, this was this, the incident here. So you can see Darwin's moving forward again, right? But... I like the right hand side. I said, look, four wide, still four wide, replace one with another. We're on board with Sasaki at the moment, who's keeping it very tight. This was the key point here. You can see Schultz pushes out a bit from the uh, the curbing, Sasaki into Sasaki. Sasaki. Now, look, look who's caught there. That black car behind Sasaki, who's got his nose buried in the wheel. No. No fault of his own because, you know, the car in front side. That's Manu Ukeda, right? Behind him, you've got, um, uh, you've got uh, Amadio. Oh, sorry, it's Sa uh, Sanchez, Kike. But, um, yeah, and then as uh, I think um, you see there's decent contact there, it looks like. Kike's gone into the back of uh, Luqueda. Luqueda's a man... I can't believe... That, out of that, the only one we lost in that pack was Sasaki. Crazy. The only one we lost out of that incident was Sasaki. And you remember, Luketa was putting all sorts of pressure over me at the end of the first long straight in the second sector. You see, those of us uh, who took evasive action, yeah, yeah, exit stage grass, we're not, we don't want any part of that. Incredible, eh? Uh, amazing. I, 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 could, I thought we were down to, to five cars. I was pleased to see Vasco get through. I thought we were down to five cars and then Luketa, his pace is outstanding. So, um, All right, so let's then have a look at uh, how it played out at the end. So as you recall, we come onto the back straight. I move over to the right, which is my preferred position. I leave Vasco alone on the inside while I still try to get draft. As we move up, I've, I I was really surprised they left me the right hand side i like the right hand side i've come back in to try and get some side draft i thought i had boxed down him but i know he's going to go for anything i got a little bit caught out here i didn't think i was i was two things actually i and i'll go a bit uh closer in on that oh, there was two things here I, well, there was still a, a touch of a gap between us uh honestly and i um i actually at, at the moment where here, there, that little touch, which is, um, I think you'll find is, oh, no, I think it's uh, Neko. Oh, it's hard to say, but I, um, I got caught. I didn't realise we were going. I was quite as um, the speed differential, but I'd also grabbed my uh, look, look left. I was looking for the cars on the on the left there. Thankfully, um, you don't bump draft in these cars, but thankfully it was a 0x, and, and you can see it doesn't even adjust. His car doesn't even move out of it. So thankfully, it could have been very bad for both of us. <clears throat> That's something that I'll uh, <laughs> try to avoid doing in the future. And then I heard the clear call, and I went, oh, you've got to be kidding me, clear? And, um, and actually, I should also point out that, um, and if we... You know, Put the um, what's her names up from memory oh, when uh, the contact happened. Yeah, you see, I've already lifted out right before the. So I'm at half throttle when the um, the net code happens. Yeah. So anyway, I did wonder about that one, but um, oh, from my part, not from his. Uh, anyway, and then so we progress on, and. Um, I couldn't believe it when I heard the clear call. I waited a couple of seconds, went, I'm clear. I had a look, I had another look, and it was all clear. So, And then, plus, I had a bit of side draft still coming my way. So I'm thinking, holy cow, I've got clear track. I've got clear track. I've got to compromise a couple of lines. And uh, 
and realistically, I had a race here earlier and um, with um, Mr. Rebello, and I was the, the roles were reversed between um, Darwin and I. I was on the inside, and I pushed out into um, Mr. Rebello, which I apologise for. He did he did well to go side by side, and we both didn't die. But I knew um, I knew Darwin was going to push out because he bounced off the curb there. So I was I, at that point. I'd sort of settled myself for P2. Um, but there you go, bit of a run through. Uh, what was a pretty, pretty interesting race, actually. <clears throat> a lot of fun, bloody intense. If, in all honesty, it was super intense. Uh, let's take a quick look at the uh, results. They're gonna come up. Uh, there they are. Look at that. Uh, so Darwin took it out. Up, um, he was up nine positions to finish first. I, uh, I was up five to finish second. Luketa, I can't believe he reco recovered to where he, to where he did after that incident on the the tail end of lap two. Incredible. Great to see Vasco, my chief rival and and partner in crime these days in terms of trying to get good results. We're pushing each other pretty hard, and it's it's good. Uh, it's very enjoyable. Um, uh, he finished in the Smurf sandwich in the end. Seb Schultz in fifth. Uh, Nagai in sixth. Kike, you can see the rogues gallery behind. Uh, nice to see Russell inside the top ten. Uh, I think he gained a little bit of eye rating out of that, which was good. Um, yeah, anyway, before I, I do go, um, like I said, the the rivalry... Let's have a quick look, actually, between at the race results. So I gained a bit out of that 50 because I lost nine, 90 the race before, which hurt a lot, but 245 championship points, which is super important because uh, Vasco and I are uh, in this friendly rivalry at the moment. And this is the, the Skip Barber official over, overall, official overall standings. And you see just ahead of me now, I caught a bit back up this week, is 11 points. I need to get 11 points next week, and uh, I think the drop rounds are a bit more in my favour than his. So, and you can see just behind us the cowboy. That's the uh, A and Z rivalry this season, where we're trying to uh, take out the club championship, and it's positioned us pretty well overall. Actually, you can see the guy though; he's uh, he's gone 20, 2600 points. I think there might be um, some maths problems in that one. Because uh, when you start getting into drop rounds, iRacing's database tends to flake out a bit at times, but it'll settle and we'll, we'll know the proper result at the end. Anyway, folks, uh, that might do us. Thank you for joining. Uh, oh, no, not that one. I was going to put the results up. Thanks for joining here once again. Um, make sure you check out Top Split TV on Twitch uh, this and every Sunday night of the official season, 9.15 p.m. Australian Eastern, GMT plus 10 at the moment, where we do the Sunday Night Lights, the biggest and hottest collection of skippy drivers around. Uh, we'll put on that race again tonight, uh, my time. Uh, but when you're watching this, just come and check us out at Top Split TV. Sit, watch the best skippy action going around. Uh, otherwise, folks, thanks for joining. As always... Uh, I'm Alex McKellen, and until next time, I'll say ciao for now.